Halo Infinite's winter update was a massive improvement in how you progress in Halo Infinite with the match XP as well as a complete overhaul of the challenge system, which now begs the question, what is the most effective way to earn all the cool stuff within the battle pass to progress as quickly as possible? Well, in this video, I did the research, I have the answer for you. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. First, let's look at how XP is actually dealt now in the game. Now, keep in mind, this is the match XP beta. They have said that it's, it is subject to change in how you earn XP. So uh, depending on how much you earn less or more, but I think this scaling will pretty much be about the same right here. So for an arena game, you get 250 XP. For a BTB match, you get 250 XP. For a featured match, that's like your typical like 10 right events, the, or the ones going with the joint ops with the covert flag one. 200 XP, and then for winning, you get 50 XP. We match MVP, you get an extra 50 XP. Top 50% of your team, 50 XP. And then for your free for all matches, first place gets 150, 150, yada, 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 yada. You get the idea. So now that we know exactly how XP is dealt, how do we add up to figure out which one would be the best mode for us to earn things in the past as quickly as possible? Well, I did the math already for you guys here. I recently sampled five matches from permanent playlists as in Team Slayer, Big Team Battle, Fiesta, and Tactical Slayer. Different matches, they have different experiences. They kind of calculate the average time and average XP dealt. For the featured, I did throw in a stealth flag match in there, but I also kind of grabbed, went back and grabbed some of these statistics from previous uh, featured playlists to kind of average it out in general. Cause yeah, it's gonna be really dependent on what kind of mode that you're playing for featured, whether or not it's gonna be beneficial for you for your time. So judging by my sample size right here, that your average Team Slayer match will last about roughly a little bit over nine minutes and you'll get about 230 XP, at least for my performance. Performance. Obviously, if you're getting MVP every, and winning every single game, your your experience will be a little different. But I tried grabbing like MVP games, bad games, middle games within the sample size here as well for each one of these sizes. So we got big team battle, average time about 12.2 minutes and get an average for me about 310 XP. Fiesta, I found the average game time was about 8.2 minutes and I earned about... 210 XP for the whole time there. Tactical Slayer here, which I thought would be the best one, is an average of 6.1 minutes with a earn rate of 220 XP. And then you're featured though, your average game time, again, this is dependent on what kind of game mode they actually have, will be seven minutes, at least from my experience, and 280 XP. Okay, that's all great and dandy to know, Kev, but you're probably asking, so what is the best bang for the buck? Time spent and XP earned, since the double XP rates that we do earn are still a live clock, not dependent on how much game time, they're dependent on how much real time you've had the game open. So that really does play a factor because just playing the match, it really is your biggest part of earning XP, but you can double it depending on your performance. So I did break it down here saying for all these different modes, how did it all break down for us guys for XP per minute here? So Team Slayer and pretty much all the other modes where like Big Team Battle even and Fiesta all averaged about 24, 25 XP per minute for me. Tactical Slayer though averaged about 36 right there when it comes to XP per minute, but Featured gave me 40. So something to take in consideration. Uh, depending on how the fast the feature modes go through guys you can find yourself really gaining a lot of xp in this game i found that these uh the covert flags were not that long of a match so it might be the best way to grind out your xp but say hypothetically if a big team battle like fiesta comes back in the feature playlist you might be better off playing tactical slayer so looking at your challenges will make a big factor of how fast you do gain through the xp but it's not going to be the sole reason why how you gain xp in the game which is fantastic as challenges should be in the game uh but they tried to make a more agnostic as he said uh more general kind of challenges so like kill enemy spartans with banished weapons you get 50 xp if we're just doing uh, five kills with those. Obviously, some modes offer banished weapons more often than others, so certainly worth taking into consideration. Or get an enemy sparring kill with a pistol immediately after switching, so that would be another three right there. That's probably would be much more of a Team Slayer kind of mode. Earn multi kill medals, uh, so that one I think would definitely would be like a, a good tactical Slayer. Uh, match the one to get because it's just really easy to get double kills. It's pretty it's pretty easy in swaps, especially where I can you know complete any match right here, get an extra 50 XP. That's really nice. 
Uh, this one right here, though, for sure would be like getting a kill with either a plasma pistol, disruptor, needler, or plasma grenade. This would just be better in any kind of your core modes or any of your team slam modes. I didn't do any uh, quick play, by the way, when it came to calculating this whole thing, because quick play does throw in like matches like oddball, which do add a lot more time. I think the big benefit right here, guys, is to think about how long does an average match take and how consistently well can you do in it. If you balance those two out, you can really find yourself gaining a lot of XP. But if you're playing like saying like Audible or something like that, or especially CTF and BTB, which can last up to 20 minutes I had previous experiences, those can take some time. So it's something worth taking into consideration, but just look through your challenges and kind of see like, okay, roughly what should I play? There actually were a lot of hidden changes made with this update that were never mentioned until the day of the release. And I cover the 15 most important changes right here in this video. Thank you very much for watching guys. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.